from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Tuesday, June the 1st, 2021. Negotiations between the leaders of various political parties in Israel, known as the Change Bloc, Yesh Atid, Yamina, Israel Beitenu, and New Hope, have been taking place over the last few days in an effort to reach an agreement to form a new government. Meetings are also being held with the head of the Arab-Israeli party, Ra'am, Mansour Abbas, who may be part of the new coalition. As you may recall, Yesh Atid's party leader, Yair Lapid, was given the task of forming a coalition by Israel's president, Reuven Rivlin, when Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu failed to do so. That was last month, and Lapid has until tomorrow night, Wednesday at midnight, to present a new coalition. An agreement from Lapid would likely see Yamina Chairman Naftali Bennett going first as Prime Minister in a rotation deal with Lapid serving as alternate Prime Minister. Israel's Foreign Minister Gabi Ashkenazi was in Egypt this weekend at the invitation of his counterpart Sameh Shukri in what was the first formal visit of an Israeli Foreign Minister to Egypt in 13 years. Ashkenazi said ahead of the trip that the two would be discussing establishing a permanent ceasefire with terror group Hamas, a mechanism for providing humanitarian aid and the reconstruction of Gaza. Ashkenazi stressed that first and foremost, Israel is fully committed to returning our MIAs held by Hamas, referring there to IDF soldiers Hadar Golden and Oron Shaul, whose remains have been held by the terror group in Gaza for over seven years. Israel's Defense Minister Benny Gantz said he is flying to the United States to meet with his counterparts there. The Times of Israel reports that those meetings will include a strategic dialogue on the issue of the U.S. considering rejoining the Iran deal and how to maintain Israel's military superiority and regional stability. Israel is strongly opposed to the U.S. rejoining the deal, and yesterday, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu once again addressed the Iranian threat, suggesting that Israel must hold the elimination of the existential threat a top priority, even if it is at odds with the United States. Gan said in response that when differences with the U.S. arise, they will be resolved through direct dialogue behind closed doors, which it seems is what Gans intends to do with this last-minute trip. The leaders of the Conference of Presidents of Major American Jewish Organizations are on a solidarity mission to Israel. Diane Lobb, William Daroff, and Malcolm Holmline met today with Prime Minister Netanyahu, saying it was an honor to express solidarity with Israel on behalf of American Jewry. This following the recent conflict between Israel and Hamas in Gaza. The conference leaders were given a tour this evening of rocket damage from the Hamas attacks by IDF spokesperson Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Conricus, and earlier today met with Knesset members and Knesset party leaders in Jerusalem and went to the Western Wall in the Old City, accompanied by Jewish Agency Chairman Isaac Herzog and also meeting with Israel Prize winner Miriam Peretz. Herzog and Peretz, by the way, are running in Israel's presidential elections, which take place tomorrow, Wednesday, June the 2nd. National Director Emeritus of the Anti-Defamation League, Abe Foxman, publicly canceled his subscription to the New York Times on Friday. Foxman wrote, I grew up in America on the New York Times. I delivered the New York Times to my classmates. I learned civics, democracy, and all the news fit to print for 65 years, but no more. Today's blood libel of Israel and the Jewish people, he wrote on the front page, is enough. The Algemeiner reports that Foxman told them that when asked by the Times phone operator the reason for his canceling, Foxman said it was the paper's bias against Israel and Friday's front page. 
That front page showed photographs of 67 children killed in Gaza and two in Israel, which was criticized by many in the Jewish world as giving the false and harmful impression to New York Times readers that Israel targeted children and civilians when the reality is just the opposite, that the IDF did and does its utmost to avoid such casualties, whereas Hamas randomly and deliberately targets civilians. Well, the virtual Day of Action Against Anti-Semitism rally was held on Thursday, led by the ADL in partnership with several other Jewish organizations on Zoom. Some 23,000 people took part, including members of Congress from both sides of the aisle, like House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, who is Jewish, and Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, all making strong statements condemning anti-Semitism. Also, representatives and leaders from a wide array of religious and ethnic groups took part in the rally, showing their support for the Jewish community. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Tuesday, June the 1st at 7 o'clock. It's from the Aleph Bet. At 7.40, Jewish members of the U.S. Armed Forces help write the actual letters of a Torah scroll that will accompany Jewish troops in the field. At 8 o'clock, thorny legal issues surrounding the Israeli-Palestinian conflict are addressed during this discussion featuring Daniel Taub and Daniel Reisner. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with the founding director of Shurat Hadin, Nitsana Darshan Leitner. At 10 o'clock, Israeli author Dorit Rabinyan speaks about her book, All the Rivers. And coming up next, it's the ILTV's Insider. And that's the JBS News Update for Tuesday, June the 1st, 2021. I'm Tisha Bader. Stay healthy, stay well.